Welcome to Lab 7. This is the measurement of MTF of a diffraction-limited system. One of the governing theories of this lab is that of diffraction, where a wavefront passing through an aperture is uh, interacting with that aperture at the edges and generates further wavefronts on that wavefront governed by the Huygens principle, which in turn creates more sources at the screen which can interfere by the difference in path lengths which generates optical path difference between different paths. Seen here is the central lobe of the diffraction pattern which is governed by the first zeros of the Bessel function of the first kind also called the airy disk whose diameter is calculated by the equation 2.44 lambda f number f number being focal length over diameter of the aperture. In the Fresnel theory of diffraction, at different image points along the z-axis, there are different images formed where we can see rings. These rings denote separations of half-wave uh, optical path difference. At uh, nf equals zero, we see the airy disk. This Fresnel number can be calculated by the aperture radius squared over wavelength of light times L. A commenting lens through a mirror, which redirects the collimated light to a test lens of one meter focal length, and it goes to the aperture to our microscope in order to image the Fresnel zones. Just say it to seven millimeter. Uh, we found that if the aperture size decreases, our distance from uh, minus one to plus one wave of defocus increases. To speed things. Diameter, we just use calipers. For this part of the lab, we're trying to find the best focus. So, what we're doing is finding the plus and minus one waves of the focus. So, first we find the first dark spot at the center, and then we move our microscope through the bright spot until we see our second dark spot, and then we take these measurements and average them out to find our best focus, which is um, they're not linear on both sides. One of the tips we learned in this lab was to open up the aperture diameter, as Min was saying, because if we increase this, then our plus one um, distance will be tighter for our best focus using the black dot method. We measured for each position. As you can see, as the aperture size decreases, this error tends to increase. And a couple possible sources of this error are the measurement of the aperture diameter, as well as possible misalignment in our system. Given a system with a particular MTF, we can see and input line image be moved to a smooth output image. This is due to interactions with the line spread function. So given our uh, input function convolved with the line spread function, we see that we have the smooth output expected. The MTF of the system determines which resolutions can be successfully imaged. So we calculate our cutoff frequency to determine how many line pairs per millimeter we can image. MTF is also calculated by using IMAX and IMIN, that specific value being IMAX minus IMIN over IMAX plus IMIN. MTF can also be calculated by taking the Fourier transform of the line spread function. A popular way to delineate the MTF of a system is to use an aim curve, which gives modulation as a function of resolution and that goes to show that modulation can be different at different resolutions in a system. The dashed line we have here is the resolution limit of the system. The intersection of these two curves determines the resolution limit. Okay, so for next, we set uh, a slit at our best focus positions and we calculated the slit width from the inverse of our cutoff frequency and by using the micrometer and uh, power meters uh, after the slit, we could measure the line spread functions. This plot on the top shows what we measured for a line spread function. We took that data and plugged it into MATLAB code, and this is what we got here. This red dotted line shows the diffraction limit, and then the green blue line shows what we got for our MTF. You can see that it pretty closely resembles the diffraction limited system and it also makes sense because the cutoff frequency is at about 11 line pairs per millimeter, which is what we expected. You can see the center null on both of the plots which corresponds to the dark spot at those locations. You can also see that the MTF is significantly lower in these cases than the diffraction limited system. 
And some errors in our plots possibly came from non-rotationally symmetric aberrations as well as scattering.